Let's look at what else we can do across the top. So with no file selected, and I say that because when you select a file, notice the menu changes at the top. Uh -huh. So with no file selected, I've also got upload, where I can upload either a file or a folder full of files to my OneDrive for Business, mm -hmm. which is a good way to upload materials you have stored locally on your machine. Right. Box is an add-on that I added to my SharePoint here, so you won't normally see that. Across the top, we'd already looked at the sort box. Next to that is the view. So by default, we're looking at this in what's called list view. I can choose compact list view, which is the same information, just a little bit smaller. I can also look at tiles, and this will give us kind of a mini icon for each file. With certain files, I will see a preview of the file in the icon. Notice that while I'm in tile view, if I hover over each document, I get a little preview of some details of the document. I can also select the document. My little checkbox that used to be on the left side of the line is mm -hmm. now in the top right corner. So if I choose that, then my menu at the top again changes. Whenever a file is selected, you get a menu at the top of what you can do with that file. I can also right click on each file to get a menu of very similar options. And we'll look at both of those. But first, let's go back to the list view. So back in list view, let's take our bin sample doc or bin test doc, and I'm going to select that. When I do, here are the things that I can do with that across the top. So I can open it. Notice this is a drop down too. I can choose to open it in browser, which is my online version of Word, or I can open it in my Word desktop app. Okay. So personal preference also depends on if you need the extra features that are in the desktop app. Mm -hmm. I can share this with other people. I can copy a link to this document, which is also like sharing. I can download a copy. Obviously, this is the opposite of uploading a copy, so this would give me a copy on my own local machine. I can delete it. I can rename it. Again, we'll skip that box menu. I can move it or copy it. And these will move or copy this file to another folder in my OneDrive for Business. So let's look at what this does. Now, with the bins test document selected, I'll choose Move To. It's asking me to choose where I want to move it. Is it in my OneDrive or in one of my other SharePoint sites, which also include our Office 365 groups and teams? In this case, I'll choose my OneDrive, and I'll choose the Documents folder, and I'll choose Move Here. Notice I could choose the folder beneath there, but by not choosing that folder, it's going to be in the Documents folder. Oh, okay. So we'll choose Move. Notice it gave me a little notification that one file has been moved, and if I go look in that Documents folder, there's our test document. Got it. Now, copy is similar, but it duplicates it. It leaves a copy behind. So if I select it here and choose Copy To, again, go back to OneDrive. Again, if I don't choose any folders, it's going to put it in the root folder. So I'll choose copy here. And now I have two different copies of this file, one here in the documents folder and one back up in my files root folder. Ah, okay. Again, I don't see it here right away. Sometimes refreshing the screen helps. And there it is. So let's select that again here. Let's look at this three dot menu because there's a couple other things we can do. In this case, we can look at the version history. So if, for example, we choose this Book 2 spreadsheet and choose Version History, you can see I have two different versions here. And if I want to go back to the older version, I can choose the three-dot menu and restore it. Now that gives me a third version, which is the new version I just restored. I can still go back to that version I just replaced if I need to. Got it. Now there's a right-click menu for most browsers, and it's extremely similar to what we see at the top. There is one other command here in the right-click menu that we didn't see before, which is Details. But that's actually, if I choose that, that's going to show me the properties of the file. And I can actually get there through the last icon on the top bar. This is the preview pane. And I can toggle it on or off by clicking that eye. So I can also click there to turn it back on. Gotcha. If it is an Office document, Word, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, then I'm going to see a preview of the document here. This is a pretty boring looking spreadsheet from the looks of it. Mm -hmm. I can see who has access to it. So nobody does, but I could give them access from here. I can see kind of a little bit of the version history. So this was edited about a minute ago. And I can look at more details just to see the type of the file, when it was modified, the path, and so on and so forth. Size of the file is sometimes useful. Okay. I can do this for any of the files here, uh, but I can't do it for multiple. So notice I could choose two files, but when I do, my preview pane basically just says two items selected. It can't give me the details of two files at the same time. Got it. But if I uncheck one, now I'm seeing the details for this other file that I checked. I'll close the More Details pane. And here I can see, again, a preview of the file on the top. I can even scroll through. Who has access to it? So nobody has access to it. No recent activity on that file. Hmm. Uh, now, Chip, you've been selecting files by pressing the little circle next to the, uh, next to the file. It gives a little check mark. 
Can't you just click on the name of the file? No, not exactly. Because what, what happens is different when you click on the name of the file. So if mm -hmm. I uncheck this, for example, if I click on the name of that file, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically open that file in the online app. Mm -hmm. Now, it used to be that, it, that this would open in sort of a preview version of the online app. Uh, the default now is to go ahead and open it in Word Online. So I can actually go ahead and edit from here. So if I wanted to change this to uh, Addendum 2, for example, I could do that. Notice it's automatically saved. Now, this is Word Online. I have a lot of the commands that I have in the desktop app, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from here, if I wanted to change, for example, this font, I could drop down my font and change it to, for example, Cambria. I could change the size. Bold, italics, underline, highlight, uh, change the font color, and so on and so forth. I can add uh, bullet points. I can add numbered lists. I can change the indentation. A lot of the things that I would do in the desktop app. And they've been adding more and more features to the online app over the years, but it's not everything for two reasons. One, we're looking at the simplified ribbon. So I can turn that off up here in the top. This is going to reopen us in sort of the classic ribbon. This is a lot closer to the default ribbon in the desktop app mm -hmm. where I can view my styles. My icons are in similar places. Um, but even so, we don't have all the features of the desktop app. So, for example, if I go under review, I don't have any options to uh, turn on track changes, for example. Mm. I don't have legal redlining. I used to have more examples I could give of what doesn't work in the online app, but in the years we've been filming this course, they've been adding more and more features. So, most of it does work here now. Oh. But if I need a feature that's not here, I can choose Open in Desktop App. That's actually going to open the Microsoft Word app on my computer, assuming my computer has Microsoft Word. And so you can see it's opened it in the desktop app. Mm -hmm. uh, by default, nowadays, on the desktop app, autosave is turned on. Uh, you might want to double check that. It's always in the top left corner. You want to make sure you save it before you close out. Right. In our case, we'll go ahead and close. We didn't make any changes. If I want to go back to editing here, I can choose resume editing here. If I'm done with this file, I can just close the tab. And that's what we'll do here. And we're back in our OneDrive. Got it.